We begin today's show with some injury updates on the Cowboys. Zach Martin left the game after he rolled his ankle against the Jets. And the Cowboys has said it was precautionary. They don't seem to be worried. Mike McCarthy is probably not going to uh, practice on Wednesday, which isn't necessarily a huge surprise, but leaves open the possibility of him not being out there uh, for week three. They'll play it cautiously. Seems like it was minor. Oh, I, I saw Martin uh, after the game. He was walking with no limp, so no boot. Looked like he was fine to me. Give it cautious for, for Wednesday, and then we'll know more Thursday slash Friday. I think he even be limited one of those days. I think he'll be good to go and out there. The Cowboys are battling some injuries along the offensive line. Tyron Smith stayed, has stayed healthy. Tyron Smith uh, has been great. Tyler Smith is injured right now. He's missed uh, the first two games. Stevens, if it's a chance, who knows? We'll see about that. Biotis has been good. Steele's been a little bit up and down, but he's been healthy at least there. Then your sixth offensive lineman, because Smith is out, Tyler Smith is out, Chuma Adoga, uh, what was initially termed a hyper-extend, or hyperextended elbow has also been called an elbow sprain and a forearm bone bruise. So I think that falls in the category of hyperextension. Doesn't sound very fun and sounds fairly painful. His status for week three is a question mark, I'd say even more so than Zach Martin. So if Adoga can't go and or Martin or Smith can't go, your next man up along the offensive line would then be TJ Bass. Now he's only played 50 snaps so far this season, but I think he's been pretty solid up front. One hit allowed, been okay enough as a run blocker. I like what I've seen from TJ Bass. I've been very impressed by him. Might be your next UDFA gem. Awesome Richards has played sparingly. I think the Cowboys view him as more of a long-term uh, angle. Like not necessarily ready to go year one, but year two, year three, year four, he'll be a bigger factor there. Uh, he's, again, small sample size. He's been fine there. I think Bass is your left guard, right guard, next man up option in the event the, the Smith-Martin-Nadoga trio is missing more than just one player come Sunday. We'll know more as the week goes on, but early vibes only. What is your concern level over the variety of offensive line injuries? Scale it for me from 1 to 10. 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. PFF has updated their grades so far. Uh, Zach Martin has graded out super well, to be clear, by the way. adoga has been serviceable. Tyron Smith getting very good grades. He's missed a couple of run blocking reps, but he's had a super high pass blocking grade against some good fronts he's faced. He's looked awesome the first two games. Still a great left tackle when he is healthy, to the surprise of, I think, very few people. Tyler Biotish has been a little bit more up and down uh, from that perspective, so I'm not overly concerned uh, at that area. Terrence Steele, by the way, has not graded out that well. He had a rough go against Bruff Heiss, or Bryce Huff uh, in uh, week two, but I think he'll be just fine. It's been a very quick passing game, by the way, which has been designed to mitigate the offensive line concerns. I remember the days that one offensive line starter being out meant the Cowboys were guaranteed to lose and it was not going to be a pretty outcome. Well, no longer the problem from that perspective. They've been doing much better with that. The game plan has worked. You're 2-0. Oh, you haven't had a bunch of turnovers. You've won games with ease. I'm not going to complain about that, even if it will get tougher against better opponents. Today's Cowboys report is sponsored by AG1. I have AG1 literally every day. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at drinkag1.com slash chat sports. Gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health, and I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 in the morning, and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. Once I've got baby Olivia set up with her breakfast, I make my own AG1. I don't feel the need for caffeine in the morning anymore, and I feel energized throughout the day. Plus, AG1 empowers the gut for whole body health. Covering my nutritional basis for the day literally couldn't be any easier. That's why I trust AG1. I simply mix one small scoop of AG1 with water, and I drink it first thing each morning. I'm done just like that, and I like that it costs less than $3 a day. It's a pretty good deal if you ask me. 
It's certainly cheaper than some nasty coffee. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients, making it the win-win we're all craving. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then AG1 is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So go to drinkag1.com slash chat sports. That's drinkag1.com slash chat sports. Check it out, folks. The link is in the comment section and in the description of today's video. More thoughts here on your Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott has been dealing, especially on third downs. That is the money down, and it's the big reason why the offense has been able to finish the drives that they've been able to finish, have the success so far. Dak Prescott, to be quite blunt, is the NFL's best quarterback on third downs so far this season. Dak on third downs this year is 15 of 21 for 159 yards, one touchdown. He has 11 first downs. He's also chipped in two more first downs on rushing attempts. So to put this in perspective, uh, I like the, uh, the Ben Baldwin numbers of EPA per play, expected points added, down and distance, flags, all that stuff merged in there. Dak Prescott is blowing away the field on EPA per play on third down, 0.776. That is way above Jordan Love, above Lamar Jackson, who was awesome in week two on third downs, ahead of Baker, Jimmy Garoppolo, all the other quarterbacks in the NFL. No Mahomes up there, no Josh Allen, Dak's been dealing. For the entire season, by the way, some advanced metrics that they are not perfect, to be clear. It factors in the results, doesn't always factor in the some luckiness or drop picks or the, the touch pass that went for touchdown. Jordan Love had one of those. That's 25-yard score, benefits Jordan Love, but that was a receiver, but still it counts. QBR leaders through uh, before Monday Night Football, Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy at the top, Tua, Jordan Love, Jared Goff. Goff was playing well before that bad interception, by the way. Uh, it, ESPN had Dak ahead of Brock Purdy, so they're both 83.7, but I think the tiebreaker, like the rounding numbers actually favors Dak there. The EPA per play leaders, by the way, Jordan Love grades out really well. Some of the advanced, advanced metrics, of like the sustainability metrics, are not as favorable for Jordan Love. He might start to, to dip a little bit there. But Prescott, Tua, Purdy, and EPA darling Jimmy Garoppolo, all super high on that list. So grade Dak Prescott so far this season. A, B, C, D, or F. Sound off. It's a safe space to comment, but I think the number should be at least a B. But that's up to you guys. Go vote for me in the comment section right now. Let's give Micah Parsons some more love as well. The early favorite for Defensive Player of the Year. He wants a little bit more than just Defensive Player of the Year, which might be asking a little bit too much. But Micah has been out of this world. By the way, he's played zero pass rush snaps because, or pass coverage snaps because he should be blitzing at all times. Seven tackles this year, outside of the occasional drop. You can now have that creativity off it. Three sacks, four TFLs. He has 12 pressures for a 21% rate. Unbelievable pressure numbers, despite consistently getting doubled and chipped. There was one up against the Jets. He was chipped and a triple team, or and double teams, a triple team. Un unreal stuff there. So will Micah win Defensive Player of the Year? Y for yes, N for no. He's still plus like 200, by the way, in the odds. So he still makes some nice money there. Predict it for me. Y for yes, N for no. Now, Micah has also said he wants more than just Offensive Player of the Year. He's been on record saying he doesn't think that MVP should just be a quarterback award, which I get. Here's what Micah said recently, or I should say after the game. When I talk about Defensive Player of the Year, I don't look at the subject of the award. I look at the subject, and when I say I want to be the best player in the NFL, whatever comes with that. I don't think just qualifying myself as just a defensive player, I think I'm a most valuable player. Look, he's probably not wrong, uh, but it's also pretty much impossible to win MVP as a defensive player. The only way it happens is if the Cowboys continue to win football games, and they continue to have, they go like, I don't know, 15 wins, something like that, 
and they're winning all these games 30 to 10, and the defense is having four, turn, four takeaways a game. And they do the old, like the Heisman Trophy used to go to the best player on the best team. They give it to the best player on the best team, and that would be Micah. By the way, folks, our programming schedule this week, just like it was last week, we're live today and on Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, two live shows. We'll have a watch party for you on Sunday. We will go live early for that because that was fun. The Duck Race back at halftime as well, so make sure you guys are subscribed. Want to give some love here to C.D. Lamb as well. He was cooking the Jets no matter who it was. He had great success against them, predominantly from the slot, but some outside reps as well because that was just awesome. Uh, look, he is sixth in the NFL in yards, pre on the night football, by the way. His numbers since Dak came back from his surgery last year, so 14 games played. So you're missing some, some, some games here. He still has almost 100 catches, for 1,300 yards and seven touchdowns. Truly, CeeDee Lamb has become a number one wide receiver. He Great body control, nice after the catch reps there. I, yeah, I know we're disappointed that Gallup's not getting in, as, as, uh, involved as much, but I'd rather give, I would rather give Lamb 13 targets and Gallup a couple than cut into Lamb's target share. I would keep feeding him if I were the Dallas Cowboys. One more news item, you know, we all kind of knew it was coming, but it has been announced officially by the Cowboys organization. Ronald Jones has been released by the Dallas Cowboys, pretty expected there. His suspension uh, was over. We'll see if they try to put him on the practice squad. I kind of have my doubts there. Uh, Deuce Vaughn, Rico Dowdle, Lipke, and Pollard are all better players, so no-brainer there. Ronald Jones officially released by the Dallas Cowboys.